We cannot sustain, oops. Was that my, uh... oh goodness. That's all right. All of you know who I am. Oh, not a good omen. Just a month away from the election, presidential seal falling off the lectern. It's one of the more embarrassing things happened since uh, Rick Klein dropped his top line mug. Ooh, good one. Top line begins right now. Hello everyone, I'm Amy Walter, welcome to Top Line. And I'm Jonathan Carl. All right, each day we bring you the latest, the greatest, live, unfiltered, unrehearsed, here from Washington, D.C., John Carl. We got a lot of good stuff yeah, going no, on these I, days, I, a I, month I, out. I, I love the first one What is your first here? Top Line? Dream Team. Mm -hmm. Here's the scenario told by Bob Woodward to John King on CNN. Woodward says that he thinks it's a real possibility that Hillary Clinton could join the ticket in 2012. You could have the dream <clears throat> team, Obama, Clinton. What happens to Biden? Well, he goes over and takes that opening over at the State Department. Everything's fine. It's a great story. We're ready for it. We're fired up, except for except one for thing, Amy. Yeah. It, it ain't going to happen. There's that little piece of the White House saying no and everybody else saying no. Okay, last president to have taken his vice president off the ticket, but not for, you know, uh, reasons that dealt well, with scandal. FDR used there to do go. this all the time. That was like I mean, every yeah, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, okay. And that was every, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, but I mean, that who, was who back when it was. Alvin Barkley? I mean. I know, that was a very, yeah. he did well. You popped some trivia there on me. Trying that's, it, that's, that's but you good. did it. I'm wow, impressed. Wow, okay, so, good. All right, all right. Our second top line, unfriended. Oh, the Alaska website, mudflats.com, uncovered some interesting mm. email traffic between Joe Miller, Tea Party favorite, and Palin endorsed candidate. And Todd Palin, Todd Palin apparently not happy with the way Joe Miller treated his wife. We can look at the caption here, the screen grab. Sarah, he writes, spent all morning working on a Facebook post for Joe. She won't use it now, not now. Put yourself in her shoes, Joe, for I, one day. I like the uh, Facebook as two words, by the way. Uh, no, really, really astounding. And, and as you remember in, in the interview that we did, uh, Mike Allen and I did, with, is there another one? No, that's the same. In the, in the interview Mike Allen and I did with Joe Miller, we asked uh, if he thought, if he would endorse Palin, he demurred, and also asked uh, if, if she should run. He said, well, it's up to her. I mean, this, you know, he wouldn't be anywhere without Todd and, and, and Sarah. That's right. So that's it. No more Facebook posts. No and you more. know what? Forget about a Twitter. Yeah. Oh, she'd tweet? been working for hours on that one, <laughs> not just all morning. Next up, dazed and enthused. Check this out. There is, of course, Proposition 19 out in the great state of California, which would legalize marijuana. Well, that's on the ballot along with some uh, other races we've been following, a Senate race, a governor's race. There's a governor's race in California? But here's the little money spent. Hmm. But here's, here's the interesting thing. Uh, Barbara Boxer uh, has opposed Proposition 19. Yes. But uh, the suggestion out here from Democrats is that overwhelmingly those that favor Proposition 19 would be voting for Barbara Boxer, stoners for, for Boxer, I guess. Uh, and, and, and here's the, the, the factor here, is yes. that Democrats are really facing this enthusiasm gap across the board, but not on this issue. On this issue, it is anticipated that there is far more enthusiasm on the pro-legalization side than there is on the anti-legalization. This could put Boxer over the top. Well, you know what, maybe what Democrats should do is say that they'll be having Cheetos at <laughs> every polling go. place. They'll turn out in droves. Yeah, this is Brilliant. a serious factor. This Brilliant. Is All right, and our final top line today, welcome back. Oh, you know we're in the city. Uh, of Chicago here, the city of broad shoulders and hard knocks. Rahm Emanuel began his first days on the campaign trail. Joe Trippi, who is working for one of his potential opponents, Tom Dart, the uh, Cook County Sheriff, had a nice little video uh, to welcome him back to the city. Here it is. Rahm Emanuel got a taste of reality on day one of his listening tour. Some bumps on day one of Rahm Emanuel's so-called listening tour today. Some went out of their way to see him, others not impressed. I can take you out the door right now and show you that we don't work in our community. He does not belong here. I mean, he didn't give us a chance to voice our actual opinion. Yeah, and <laughs> the best part of the video though was was uh, they they show uh, Rom moving, getting leaving uh, after shaking a bunch of hands in the car, and he's putting on the antibacterial uh, lotion on his hands. I know. Well, maybe he can do it as a as a PSA on the flu. Use that as another 
important way to connect it's, with it's Chicago voters. Stuff. What do you think? Stuff. All right. Well, we are very happy to be joined today, speaking of the House, Rahm Emanuel, former House member, with Nan Hayworth, who is running for Congress up in the 19th Congressional District of New York, challenging John Hall. There she is, Skyping her way. I love this new technology. Um, she is a first-time first -time candidate um, and an ophthalmologist by trade. That's even in her campaign slogan. Thanks for coming on the show. First thing I want to ask you, you are running here as, as an outsider, first-time candidate. If you come to Washington, you know already what the leadership team in Washington is likely going to look like on the Republican side. Are you concerned at all that um, they might not get what it's like for somebody like you and some of these other candidates, Tea Party candidates, et cetera, who are not part of the system? I, I, and I'm so sorry because I think I missed a little bit of the question, but basically you, you want to know how uh, the congressional, the Republican Congressional Caucus now is, as it, the members now are going to adapt to the new members Correct. coming in. Yes, that's that, right. I, you know, I think they are so eager to have us there because we form the reinforcements for the ideas that they have been working with all their might to promote in the Congress as it's composed now. And of course, given the majority, we haven't had the, the, the power, the, the rhetorical power that, that we've needed, the voice. And I think they are eager to get us in there because we all share the principle that constitutional freedoms are foremost in our minds. That goes all across the Tea Party uh, movement as well as the Republican Party, of which I've been a member for my entire adult life. Uh, so I'm not specifically a Tea Party candidate, although I am a proud Hudson Valley patriot. But I do feel confident that we will be able to produce great results, shrink the size and scope of the federal government, reduce taxes and control federal spending, put the federal government on a budget in line with what the Constitution intended. And I think all of us in the new Republican conference are going to feel the same way. I, I love that we have you in the middle of an event up there. And thank you for uh, thank you for, for breaking away to talk to us. A, a very quick question. Uh, have you read the Pledge to America yet? I have read it, yes. And, and are you are you talking about it on the campaign trail? Are you campaigning on it? Well, it represents laying out so many of the, the principles and the specifics that we have been discussing because we've been listening to the American people all along. In the case of our campaign, we've been on the ground for well over a year now throughout the New York's 19th congressional district. So what the pledge represents is a promise to shrink the size and scope of the federal government, to tax less, to spend less, and to spend more responsibly when the government does have to do so, and to have our federal government be more accountable and transparent. And so, those are have been cried for by the American public. So we've been but, campaigning on the pledge for the entire time, really. You, you have been. So, so you're, you're talking about it on the trail, and your constituents know what it is? They represent, the, the pledge represents, again, on paper, what the, the principles that we have been propounding throughout the campaign. And I listen and I, I get the chance, of course, to, uh, to speak with future constituents. And uh, these are exactly the concepts that we've been talking about. So the pledge is, is exactly in line with, with all of those uh, with all of those initiatives that the public wants to see us pursue. I just want to go back to something you said earlier, talking about uh, constitutional freedoms, bringing, uh, bringing Congress back to that issue. Yes. Are, are there certain issues? We've heard some candidates now on the trail saying uh, certain issues like unemployment benefits, uh, for example, are not part of, uh, it, they're not constitutionally mandated and therefore not something that the federal government should be involved in. Is that something that, that you agree with? Or are there other things that you think the government does that are not constitutionally mandated and, and should be stopped? What we see, what the citizens of District 19 despair of, in a sense, but have great confidence for the future if, if, as we change the Congress about, is that our economy is suffering as a result of what the federal government has done unwisely. 
unemployment is much higher than it should be because of, at least in part because of, what the federal government has imposed on or taken from the American citizen. We certainly make the argument that the Constitution limits the size and scope of the federal government. And I think the reason that people are so aware of what the Constitution laid out for us this year is because they really feel, many of them for the first time in their lifetimes, that we are under threat as a nation, not only from without, but also from within. When you look but, but, at the but, but if, 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 if just, debt. And we're just about out of time, but, but do you think unemployment compensation, federal unemployment uh, uh, benefits are unconstitutional, a minimum wage, is that an unconstitutional uh, reach uh, for federal power? It's, it's, not, it's not really a question of constitutionality in those instances. It's a question of wisdom. Is it prudent for us to be doing that when we really need to empower so is it, businesses to, to grow? And right now so, what the federal government has done is impeding hiring and impeding growth and investment in our businesses, small and large. And so and, they're... And, they're and, and we're, tr you know, we're, we're truly we're truly out of time, but I just want to be sure you want to understand. But are you opposed to the idea of a federally enforced minimum wage and federal unemployment uh, a compensation? I am not running on rescinding those two uh, those two things. That's right. that's not part of what what I'm talking about. What I what I what I do talk about very much is that the federal government is spending far too much and regulating far too heavily, and we need to revive and not be a burden on our private sector. That's what's most important. Unemployment will actually. Uh, fall, I would say, rather readily if we can let the private sector that creates jobs do what it does best. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Say hello to all the folks there at your event. Where, where are you, by the way? We are in the village of Florida in the town of Warwick in Orange County in beautiful Congressional District 19, the Hudson Valley in New York. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.